Hey everyone, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk about keeping track of your time and invoicing as a freelance or contract developer. Setting up invoices is pretty much the most annoying process ever, and I try to limit it to once per month for each client that I'm working for. Now, I've been a freelance developer for about 20 years, but I actually only automated this a few months ago. So throughout the years, what I've typically done is I just had a markdown file and I can show you one of these files now. So I've tried to anonymize some of this data because obviously I can't show company names and things like that. So I used two very popular names from very good movies, Cyberdyne and Terminator 2, and Prestige Worldwide from Step Brothers, one of the funniest comedies ever. Anyways, let's take a look here at this Prestige log file that I have. Now, I've been doing this for a number of years where I always had the company name in this file and this is really a reminder for me to invoice this company because, you know, if the person's name is Brennan or something like that or Dale, then uh, you don't want to invoice them if they're working for a company. But here's what I always did. So I always kept track of the actual day that I worked. In this case, whatever, 2019, February 12th. And by the way, all of these bullets that you see here are actual bullets that I've written in my log file. Uh, I removed some of the things here, like this is actually a script name that's the company name that I don't really want to show on video because I respect their privacy. And then like things like this, like call with Brennan or call with Dale or whatever. Yeah, like that's not their actual names, but all the other data is real. So like doing all of these things, yes, I did that for five hours on February 9th, 2019. Anyways, the common theme here is, you know, I would have this date and then I would just separate it by the amount of time that I worked in some human readable format. So like one hour, 30 minutes, or five hours, or 30 minutes, and things like that. And at the end of the month, what I would do is, you know, I would open up a calculator. So, you know, just to show you that process, uh, oh, this is gonna be kind of small. Maybe I can zoom in uh, while I'm editing the video, but it doesn't really matter. So I would be like, okay, so I worked one hour, 30 minutes. So I would go 1.5, and then I would add five hours, okay, plus five, and then one hour, okay, plus one, and then 30 minutes, okay, plus 0.5. Okay, so I worked eight hours this month for this company. And then I would take that and multiply it by my hourly rate, and that's how much I would invoice them for. But, you know, things aren't that simple when you're dealing with money. If you're doing that process where you're manually adding up all of these different uh, log entries, you know, human error happens, and over the years, you know, I've learned to triple check these numbers because the worst thing you can ever do is like overbill a client because you made a stupid clerical mistake. Or, you know, if you're dealing with a decent amount of money here, I don't know how much you charge, right? 75 an hour, 150 an hour, 300 an hour. Like if you forget to bill for two hours, I mean, that's like whatever, you know, 150 to 600 dollars. Like you definitely don't want to miss out on that because you forgot two plus two equals four or you missed a day in the log, which is actually very easy to miss when you have like 28 of these in a whole month or something like that. So what I've done is, and by the way, that's just one client for the month. If, if you happen to have a couple, which I typically do, so a, a lot of times like I'll just work maybe 10 hours for one client, 20 for another, you know, maybe, maybe even five for another. So I'd have to do this multiple times for each client every single month. And, you know, this takes about 15, 20 minutes to do, and it's ridiculously tedious and ridiculously error prone. So as of a couple months ago, what I did is I open sourced a script that will go through a log file like this and just calculate all the results for you automatically so there's zero human error. So let me show you an example of that. Right now, uh, just so you know, for this script to work, your log files do need to be pretty much formatted like this where like the company name is not that important. Uh, I mean, we're not using that data right now. The only thing that really matters in this whole entire file are these dated lines, like the bullet points don't matter. And even like notes, when it comes to this, like notes are optional and they have no bearing on anything, right? They're just meant for you to put like whatever you want about the project. Uh, I just decided to include this on video so you can kind of see, you know, what type of notes I'm doing in this file. So I often jot down notes when on call with a client, you know, put together a, a quick list of to-dos for the next session, and then really just write anything about uh, the project that's interesting, or maybe even some questions that I might, that I might want to ask a client in the next call, right? It's just a whole brain dump of basically things that I'm not going to be sharing with clients as is, like I'm never going to copy that and send that in an email, but uh, it's for my own reference. So anyways, let's take a look here. So I'm going to close this file 
and uh, run this script. And we'll go over the script in a little bit, but I just want to demo how it works. So if I run uh, this invoice script on Prestige Worldwide on a log file for the year 2019, it's going to report back exactly what we got with the calculator, which was eight hours. And in this case, the script defaults to $150 an hour because I think that's about average for uh, most freelancers, I guess, if you're in the US. You may charge more, ching, or you may charge a little bit less, whatever. Anyway, so I also worked four days that month. And if we go back to that file here, you can see that uh, I do have four dated entries here, which I find is a pretty valuable uh, piece of information to have because it lets me know at a glance like, ooh, I only worked only worked four days that month. Maybe it was like once a week or whatever. So here we can see, you know, here's the eight hours that I put in at 150 an hour, and that's going to give you 1,200 bucks. And if I pop open this uh, calculator here, and if I take eight, and then I multiply that by 150, you get 1,200 bucks. And then also, you know, it outputs the company name here, which really just comes from this folder here, which is pretty nice. And then also we have uh, another company here, this Cyberdyne company. And I'm going to open up that in Vim just, just so we can see what else we can do with this script. So if you don't want to have $150 an hour as uh, your calculator for the, for the amount that you get paid for, you have a couple of options. So actually, before we look at this, let me just show you that uh, we can rerun this other one here and just put in like maybe you charge 500 bucks an hour. So now you can see like what you would make if you charge that amount. Or of course, you know, maybe you charge 50 and that's what you make. But having to put in the hourly for every time you run this invoice command is a little bit lame. So inside of the log file, you can actually just put in the amount that you want to make. By the way, 800 is the model number for Arnold's character in Terminator 2. Boom. Very good movie. So anyways, this is pretty much the same exact file that we looked at before, except this one just has more information. So uh, in this case, I have a couple of jobs that I did at the end of 2018. And then also here we go for January 2019. And there was actually quite a few in between this, but you know, I tried to keep these bullet points to things that are kind of generic without having to edit them too much. But uh, some formatting things that I like to do besides what we went over before, like this timesheet formatting is very specific to the script. Like it has to exist like that if you want to set a custom time. But, you know, when it comes to other things like separating uh, months or years, I usually put the triple dashes there. That's not really important at all. I mean, you don't need to have them there. It's just nice uh, when you scan the file to just be able to break things up by month or year just by looking for those triple dashes or even just searching for them in your editor so you can uh, jump between months pretty easily. So let me go and uh, run this now and we'll take a look at the output for the one for Cyberdyne. Same thing as before, we'll just output the log file for 2019, but we can also do it for 2018. But when it comes to invoicing per month, you probably wanna do it per month. So it's very simple to do it, uh, you know, for whatever months, like in that case for the second month in 2019, uh, there was no work and there's no work for March either because if we go and look at the uh, file in Vim here, there it is. Uh, we can see that we only had work being done in January of 2019, which is the 01. So we can also go here like back to 2018 and, and put 12 and that would give us the same result as that because again, I only had work being done on that one month. Also, if you don't trust the numbers, you can even run uh, debug mode equals one and now if you do that, it's actually going to output the number that you put for the work being rendered. And then it'll give you the decimal hour version of that. So you can compare that for each day. And then at the very bottom, like this column should add up to whatever these three are. So 350 plus one plus two is 650, right? Three plus two is five plus one is six with the 50. Uh, so if you're not really sure if your hours line up and you wanna kind of just calculate it manually, you can do that as well. So also another pretty cool thing that you can do with this is uh, you can just run the invoice script on your contracts directory. So just to give you a heads up here, like I really have a, a different contracts folder that has many, many more contracts. But um, what you can do is, is just run the invoice script on the whole entire contracts folder, pass in a date like 2019, and then let it rip. And it'll actually go and calculate the invoice amounts for every single contract that you have. As long as each of these contract folders has a uh, log.markdown file in it, which they do. So Cyberdyne has its own log file 
and Prestige Worldwide has its own log file. And now when it comes to the beginning of the month, because what I do is, well, let's say when May 1st, 2019 comes along, I am going to run this type of command for April. In this case, we're not gonna get any output, but then I'll be able to see like, okay, Cyberdyne, I have to invoice them for 450, Prestige Worldwide, okay, 1200. And then from there is the other half of the story, right? It's like you take these numbers, you put them into your, uh, maybe if you're using GNU Cache or something like that, or, well, when it comes to actually making the invoice itself, what I do is I have a template on Google Docs that I just copy paste around, and it takes like, I don't know, 15 seconds or whatever for me to take this information, take the bullet points that were in this file here and uh, put them into an invoice. So like I would consider these to be low level details. Like I don't put that information into the invoice, but I would sum this up to be, you know, like a one liner or a two liner or something like that based on what was accomplished. And then from there, you know, I just export that as a PDF and ship it to the client and then get paid. Now, what I would like to do with this invoice script is eventually, maybe down the line, I'd like to add like a generate flag where it'll just generate a PDF for you. And I think that could be done if I add some metadata to that log file. But for now, my biggest pain point was calculating the number of hours that I worked and then getting an amount for that. And uh, yeah, like that used to be a 20 minute operation that I freaking hated. And now it's literally running this one command once a month and I get all the numbers and uh, it's pretty cool. So if you do want to play around with this invoice script, I mean, I just open sourced it today a couple of hours ago. <clears throat> so if you go to github.com slash nickjj slash invoice, you will be able to download this script and play with it on your own. I don't want to bore you with all the documentation. By the way, documentation is super important. So this video is not really like a full blown going over this whole documentation, like here's how to install it. Like I kind of just wanted to showcase what you can do with this script because installing it and examples and other things, it's all in this readme file. Like it's super simple to install. You just copy this command, put it on your path, and then you run it. Like it's installed. Here's some examples like explaining, okay, like that's the parameter for the log file and you put in the date if you want or an optional amount. And there's the debug mode and then kind of, you know, this is almost like a blog post is documentation, but uh, yeah, like here's some best practices based on 20 years of doing freelance work. Like I like to put the newest entries on top because it's just easier to find them when you actually need them. And then, uh, yeah, like time tracking with those freaking date pickers that go down to the second, like no one's time tracking like that in, in the real world. Like maybe if you're in the super enterprise with red tape, sure. But when it comes to uh, doing freelance work as a solo developer, like five or 15 minute intervals is totally fine because that stuff, you know, it evens out over time. So like if I have a call with John, let's say for an hour and we run five minutes over, I'm not going to bill him more than an hour, like the five minutes it's on the house. And then if I'm working for John later on, maybe I finish work five minutes early, like two months down the line. And then it just evens out. Like that's just how it works in the real world. And then, yeah, like when it comes to a, user errors, like you as in the user, and you're creating that time tracking format, like when it comes to putting in the dates and the hours, you want the script to work if you accidentally forgot a space here, or maybe you put two spaces there, or maybe you decided to put 90 M instead of one H 30 minutes. Like you want all of that stuff to work. So this script, uh, it goes over all of that and it tries to make your life, uh, as easy as possible. And it's it's not just going to forget to calculate things because you forgot a space. And yeah, like anything uh, with money, triple check it manually until you're super confident. <clears throat> and on that note, uh, testing wise, like there's a whole bunch of automated tests for the script. And I actually did run this over an entire year's worth of invoices, which was over 50 invoices, I think it was. And uh, like I, I did this months ago. In every single case, the, the script calculated the exact amount to the cent. So I'm real confident that if you format that log file that the way that it should be based on the documentation and all of the examples, then uh, you will get the values that you expect. So let me just show you real quick here. If I go to uh, this invoice folder where, well, let me clear the screen first. And I just go to D source GitHub invoices tests. So if I go here and just run uh, the test suite, you can see here that uh, I have a whole bunch of tests in place that basically, like if you put in your hours with this type of formatting, 
it's all going to evaluate the correct decimal hours. So, you know, if you put two hours, 30 minutes, or you put the leading zero there, you get the same amount with or without the spaces. And you can even, you know, put in some crazy stuff like colon 30 gives you 0.50, which is half an hour. Uh, and we can actually take a look here at uh, some of these files here. So let's take a look here at the tests file. Uh, let's edit it anyway. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need to look at the test script, but if you want to see like example usages, they're all here. Uh, it gets all the expected value, values that you would expect. And then for the script itself, uh, I don't think we should really go over this line by line, but uh, it's pretty freaking well commented, especially things like this, like this awk script, which is a two-liner, but it's one of those things that literally took me an hour to create, and I Googled for like 8,000 different things. And uh, if these comments weren't here, I'd pretty much forget that within about five seconds or so. Uh, <laughs> but this is the thing that's responsible for taking something like, you know, 2H30M, and it converts it to, uh, what would that be, whatever, you know, 2.5 hours. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's also a help menu if you just run the invoice script without any arguments, and I can show you that here. Well, let me just open up a new window. Uh, you can just run invoice, and you kind of get some examples that you can copy-paste to some extent. So, like, I put the invoice script uh, in my .local.bin folder, so it's on my system path. Instead of user local bin, it's up to you on where you want to put this script. Just you want to make sure that you can run it from anywhere, which is pretty helpful because then you can just go to your contracts directory and run it. So let's see, what else can we take a look here in the script? Yeah, I mean, it's just all bash, and uh, it's actually not that long. So if you look here, it's just under 150 lines of code. And I kind of just wanted to make the video to showcase how it works because especially when it comes to something like this where you know, you're going to have to, like the bulk of your time would be setting up those log files to be formatted how they need to be. It just so happens I had those log files formatted like that for like the last six or seven years. So when I wrote this script, it was really just taking all those values and then just making sure that things lined up. But uh, if you're looking for ways to really save time as a freelancer, I think automating this is a pretty big deal in a good way. And uh, I recommend that you check it out. So I'm going to leave a link here in the description to this uh, invoice script on my GitHub repo. And uh, let me know how it goes in the comments if you try it out. Maybe if there's a bug, you can report it. But I think for currently right now, I don't think there's any bugs with the calculations. But uh, you know, as mentioned before, I'd love to generate a PDF from this to automate the whole process end to end. And while that, that really isn't a huge uh, bottleneck for me right now, you know, if I get a real bored one day and I have nothing going on, then uh, maybe I will do that. Or if you want to take a shot and open up a pull request, gladly I would accept that. I think everyone watching would love that. So on that note, uh, let me know how it goes. If you like the video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.